Hi, we are here today with upright bassist Kent Blanton. Uh, Kent has worked with the Tennessee Mafia Jug Band, including appearances on the Grand Old Opry. He has also worked uh, with Marty Stewart on the Marty Stewart Show. He has also uh, recorded and performed and backed up people such as Ricky Skaggs and Vince Gill, Earl Scruggs and Patty Loveless, mm -hmm. among some of the many, many artists that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. um, so Kent, tell us how you got started playing music. Well, I got started when I was about 12 years old, 10 okay. or 12 years old, uh, playing the guitar and the banjo and some, and uh, then in, uh, when I was in junior high, there was an upright bass mm -hmm. uh, in the band room at school, and uh, I was just kind of interested in it and uh -huh. asked the uh, band director, and, and it wasn't long before he, he got it down for me, and the rest of it was kind of history. Me and, me and Leroy Troy went to school together, and we started, started playing a lot together hmm. back in those days, so that's how we started. Well, Kent, I know you've studied with some of um, legendary uh, musicians. Who were some of your influences? And tell us some more about that. Well, mainly, uh, my biggest influence was a, a bass player here in Nashville named Joe Zinkin. Okay. This is Joe's bass, by the way, that, <laughs> that uh, I acquired. And Joe was a, a 18 player okay. throughout the uh, 60s into the 70s. Yeah. But he started uh, in the 30s working with the Delmore Brothers. Hmm. And he worked with Roy Acuff throughout the 40s. But he was kind of the... I'd say the godfather or the grandfather, the country bass mm -hmm. player. He started out as like the, the, the well-known bass comedian, okay. but he was really the first um, serious player yeah. of the bass. He could really, really play, and yeah. he, he influenced himself uh, some of the other players such as Junior Husky and Roy Husky Jr., mm -hmm. and Bob Moore, and some of those mm -hmm. guys. He was like, like their influence too, and so <clears throat> I kind of dug back into the, to the to the real roots of the instrument in sure. Nashville, and, uh, and he, along with those guys I mentioned, and there was a guy named uh, Ernie Newton hmm. that used the drum head on the bass, yeah. Lightning Chance, those guys, the early Nashville guys okay. are, are who I really uh, studied and, and uh, influenced by. Neat. Now I'm going to demonstrate the technique of the drum attachment. This is something that was brought into country music in the late 40s. It's kind of take the place of a snare drum. The technique to this is really uh, using the uh, drum brush, which is uh, just like what a drummer uses on the uh, snare drum, and it's really not so much hitting the, uh, the head as it's stirring, just kind of like the jazz drummers did. Well, Kent, this bass right here, tell us about some of the recordings that this actual bass has been on. Well, this bass was, uh, like I said, used by Joe Zink, and it, it, probably the, uh, the earliest recordings with the Delmore Brothers mm -hmm. back in the 30s, and then throughout the 40s, he used it with Roy Acuff. Interesting. And uh, then he became a, a side musician in the studios, known as the A-Team, mm -hmm. starting in the late 50s. And it's on some of Patsy Cline's later recordings. Wow. It's on uh, the, uh, a few of the... Uh, Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs tunes yeah. in the 50s, late 50s and the 60s. Um, Divorce by Tammy Wynette's a big one. Yeah, yeah. The Battle of New Orleans by Johnny Horton wow. is another big one. It's on a lot of Lefty Frizzell songs, yeah. Ray Price. Uh, Pure Love by Ronnie Millsap was one of the big ones. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest song it ever cut was uh, For the Good Times by Ray Price, which okay. was a monster cross yeah. crossover hit. Yeah. Now, Kent, you had mentioned Earl Scruggs. Um, did you go to his memorial service? Tell us um, about that. Yes, I did. I did. That was a, a very nice service for Earl. He was a, he was a very special person, yeah. and uh, and Eddie Stubbs did a, a real fine yeah. job, and and yeah. it was really a, a good send off for Earl, mm. and some good some stories were told yeah. too, which were very important for yeah. that. I was going round the mountain. Maybe 
making 90 miles an hour when the chain on my bicycle broke. I was getting all over it. Stop it. Stop it. What's the matter? What's the matter? I wanted a break. <laughs> you don't get no break. I wanted a break. Hey, listen, don't tell me that you're going to show out before we get off the stage here. We come down to this Opry and I wanted me a break. Pete Fisher is not going to stand for this. Ah, uh, Pete don't care. He don't <laughs> get no break. Well, I mic. will tell you. you. Ain't hey, well, well, hey, well, hey, Lester's going to be here. Here, here, 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 He got a break. <laughs> the Tennessee Mafia Chuck Man. Well, Ken, a lot of musicians do have day jobs, um, and you have an interesting day job um, and are going to be doing an even more interesting day job soon, hopefully. Um, tell us about some of those. Well, yes, uh, uh, right now I'm an EMT and work for an ambulance company. Yeah. We do a lot of, that's it's pretty interesting at yeah. times. Um, we. Uh, we transport people in the ambulance mm -hmm. and things. And then I, also my other day job of sorts is uh, as I'm a barber, I cut hair in a barber shop, which is, is, a, is a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a really, really good job and, yeah. and get to meet a lot of interesting sure. people doing that. I really enjoy it. Now I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of slap technique that was brought into the country world by some of the uh, great jazz players back in the 20s and 30s. <laughs> The way we do this is by taking our right hand and pulling the, uh, the string just like we're playing it until we pop it against the back of the uh, fingerboard. Then we use the palm of the hand to slap down. That's a single slap. A double slap, you sometimes hit it twice. You and then there's triple slap and on from there. Kent, thank you so much um, for inviting us into your studio. This is a very cool setup you have here and um, talking to us today. Well, thank you. <laughs>